You are listening to Disney Travel Tales, episode number 47. This is a space where you can escape the real world and immerse yourself in someone's recent Disney trip. However, this show is a little different. I'm Jenny, and today I'm talking with my daughter Amelia about our day at Aquatica, SeaWorld's water park. I hope you enjoy our review. Walt Disney World has released their 2023 vacation packages through October 31st. If you are interested in traveling to Disney next year, or if you just have questions about Disney trips, email me at jenny at trolleylanetravel.com. I would love to talk Disney with you. Traveling to Disney can feel very overwhelming, and that's why I'm here to help you. All of my services are free to you, so let's make next year the year you go to Disney, not just the year you talk about it. If you're on Instagram, you can find us at Disney Travel Tales. This is a great way to connect and just stay up to date with what's going on with the show and to see pictures from our guests on their trips. Okay, so let's get going. Imagine yourself going down a big water slide and let's go. So I'm here today with my daughter, Amelia, and we are going to give our review of Aquatica, which is the water park at SeaWorld in San Antonio. We visited Aquatica this week and we had a lot of fun, didn't we? Yeah. This was our first time going. Um, We got season passes back in March and we went to SeaWorld, but it was a little bit too chilly outside for us to go to Aquatica that day. So we decided we would wait till summer. And our plan for the day was to get to SeaWorld as soon as it opened and to do our favorite rides over there and then to head over to Aquatica around lunchtime. Around that time, it's usually when it's getting pretty hot here in Texas. And then we were going to give, you know, do as many water slides and pools as we possibly could. So if you are unfamiliar with SeaWorld and the uh, water park, they're actually connected. So when you walk through the main gate of SeaWorld, you can either go to the right to SeaWorld or you can go left to the water park. And this is the same in Orlando as well. So let's just dive right into it. Um, Amelia, what was your first reaction when we walked into Aquatica? My feet were hot. Yeah, it was a really hot day. But what was your first reaction of the park? I thought it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool when we first walked in. When you walk in, you're kind of high up and you walk down a ramp. So we're walking down the ramp. We could see the big wave pool. They also had this area where you can um, pay to swim with stingrays. And so that was also really cool. I was not expecting that. So that was really neat. Um, And the park was laid out really nice. It's different levels, so you could see the big water slides out in the back, and it looked really fun, didn't it? Yeah. So we had originally wanted to get a cabana, but I waited too long. I guess I just didn't think it would be that busy on just a random Monday in the summer, but it actually was pretty busy. It seemed fairly crowded. Um, So all the cabanas were booked, all the chairs that you could rent were booked. So we just decided to go over to the locker and rent a locker and stick all our stuff in it. And then we were just going to basically just do the rides. Not a lot of relaxing, mostly just get the rides done and do as much as we possibly could. After we dropped off our bags in the locker, which I made a huge mistake, didn't I? We forgot our shoes. We forgot our shoes and the ground was so hot. It was probably about 103 that day in San Antonio And we started walking. I don't know. I just didn't necessarily think about it because the first thing we wanted to do was head over to the Lazy River. And so it wasn't that far from the lockers, but our feet were literally on fire, weren't they? Our feet got sunburned. Yeah. So I would highly recommend bringing some kind of water shoe if you're going to visit one of these parks in a warmer climate. So the first thing we did was go to the Lazy River, which is called Loggerhead Lane. We were lucky enough, there was a family there getting on at the same time as us, and the dad grabbed us tubes because it was just me and her that day. And so we got in our tubes and we took off. What did you think about this Lazy River? I thought it was really fun. 
Yeah, we've been to a few different types of water parks before, so we've done different types of lazy rivers. What was different about this one, did you think? Um, I thought it was, like, longer. The tubes were a little different. Um, there was a bridge that you went under, and there was... A bumpy part, which usually the lazy rivers we go to doesn't have that. Yeah, so the bumpy part was like water jets shooting up from the bottom, and they kind of hit you hard, didn't they? They didn't hit me hard. Well, they hit me hard. Like, it almost hurt at one point, but you go over that, so it feels like you're um, almost like in really rough waters, like whitewater rafting or something, which that was actually fun. I really enjoyed that, even though it kind of hurt. (laughs) Something I would recommend is while we were going through the Lazy River and while we were going through different areas of this park, I really was checking out the cabanas. And the cabanas in this section are definitely the ones that I would go ahead and rent. So the next time we go, I plan on getting one of these cabanas. They were super nice and the location wasn't super busy or crowded. You didn't have a ton of people walking around and you had a great view of the Lazy River. And my kids love the Lazy River. This is something that when we go to water parks, they'll go back to. to, They'll go ride some rides, do some water slides, but then they always come back to the Lazy River to relax. So I would highly recommend grabbing a cabana on the Lazy River if you get the opportunity. So how many times do you think we run around the Lazy River? Um, I think like two times. Yeah, I think we run around about two times. It was really fun. Um, I think you wanted to go around one more time, but I was like, we got to go do some rides. It was already getting a little bit later. Um, we were not planning on staying until closing time. And so we kind of had to get these rides done. So the first ride we went to do was Riptide Race, which is the newest ride at Aquatica. Riptide Race is a really fun tube ride that two people can do. So that was one of the reasons it was our first ride, wasn't it? Yeah, because we only had two people. Yeah, and Amelia was a little bit nervous about the water slides, and so she wanted us to ride together. So when you get to the top of the um, slide, you get a tube, and then two of you ride. So the smaller person will sit in the front, and the larger person will sit in the back. They put two people next to each other, so you're racing down to see who can get there the fastest. This ride was so much fun, wasn't it? It was really fun. We went on three times. We did. And we got really lucky. Even though the park was fairly crowded, this line was not long at all. Um, And honestly, none of the lines were super long. Um, We did wait in a line later that we'll talk about that was kind of long. But for the most part, I don't think it's necessary to spend the extra money to get the fast key, which is like a Disney fast pass where you can skip the line. These lines really weren't that long. This one we walked up to three times straight in a row. Maybe one time waited like five minutes. I don't know. It was very, very quick. But this was a super fun ride. I think kids of all ages, as long as you are tall enough, would absolutely love this ride, especially because you can ride it with an adult. So after we did Riptide Race three times, we went over to Big Surf Shores, which is the big wave pool. Amelia really kind of just wanted to sit in a pool and relax a little bit, mostly because our feet were literally on fire at this point. So we went over and we went to the wave pool. I think we waited like five minutes before the big waves came. And this pool was very, very crowded. There were a ton of people in it, but we had a great time. What did you think about the wave pool? It was fun, and we went up to where um, it um, stops and you can't go any closer. And you, it was just like it, you like jumped over and that's it. But when you, um, what if you go back more, then it like it's more big. And I would like the going a little back more like kind of go in the middle where you can go yeah we um we were up at the very front where the waves are big but then we scooted back to where the waves would break and that's where it was really fun Mm -hmm. so after we uh sat in the wave pool and did the waves we headed over to this area which is right next to the wave pool called cutback cove and this is a area that is for 
younger kids and older kids. It has a couple of slides that were really fun. You did the slides. It also has like one of those big mushroom style things where the water comes out and drapes over. It has these smaller type of lounger chairs in the waters for adults to sit in. This area was also extremely crowded. Like Amelia did the slides and I pretty much was like, let's get out of here. This place is way too crowded. What'd you think about those slides? They were fun. They were just body slides, so you went down by yourself. Were they fast, or was it thrilling? Like, how would you describe it? So, there was a little one, and it was still fun. It just wasn't really that thrilling. But then there was a big one where a lot of people were in line. Um, And that one was a little thrilling because you went down pretty fast. You did a loop, and then you um, got in the pool. Hey parents, do your kids listen to podcasts? Do they like solving mysteries and flexing their imaginations? Mysteries at Riddleton Elementary is a new children's mystery podcast. Your kid can join Billy Bonanza and Susie Sockington on exciting and wacky adventures as they attempt to solve mysteries around their school. Mysteries at Riddleton Elementary is available now on all podcast platforms. So around this point, um, I was getting hungry and we decided, because we had seen other people who were walking around in their sandals and then at each um, ride, they had a place where you could put your sandals, but also they would actually let you go up the line with your sandals on. And if you were on a tube ride, you could just hold them if they didn't strap onto your feet, which Amelia's sandals strapped onto her feet. So she was fine. So we decided to go back to the locker. Um, We got our shoes. We got a drink. And then there was this little food truck over there that had different types of mac and cheese. And I decided to try it because I was getting hungry at this point. And I am, it is so unfortunate for me to say this, but this food was so not worth it. I think I spent $14 on this cup of mac and cheese that was probably worth like $2. It was okay. It was just your basic mac and cheese with some cheese sprinkled on top. Like it wasn't gross, but it was absolutely not worth the money. Because it was in a food truck, I thought it might be a little bit, I don't know, different than one of the restaurants there. Because we've been to the restaurants at SeaWorld and typically the food is not anything that's amazing. So I was hoping this would be a little bit extra, but it wasn't. I don't really recommend. Honestly, I would probably just pack us some food next time we go because I really don't recommend eating at the food here. It's so overpriced and it's just not that good. So I got that. Um, We also went over to this different pool area just to check it out. It was called (laughs) Wano... I don't know how to say this, Wanau Waters. And so it's just your basic swimming pool. It had a couple of smaller slides on it. Um, It also had some cabanas there. These cabanas, unless you have small kids that really just want to sit and swim, I would not rent these cabanas. They just, I think they're a little bit higher priced because they are right on a pool. But unless you're going to spend a lot of time in that pool, these cabanas were kind of hard to get to. So I don't recommend it unless you're just going to kind of hang out in the pool. But this pool area was just basic. What did you think about those little slides? They were fun. Yeah, it was just nothing, nothing too exciting. So after this, we wanted to hit up a couple of more water slides. So we went over and saw that there was another two water slide close by called Stingray Falls. Um, we got in line for that. I think we waited around 10 minutes. This ride has a big round water, uh, or inner tube that four people can sit in. So we were standing in line and they were, um, there were these two kids at the front of the line. We were a little bit back, not too far back. And the lady, the lifeguard asked if there was an adult that would want to ride with these kids because you have to be at least 14 years old to ride by yourself. Um, so we volunteered because it was just me and her. So we rode with these two other kids. They were really cute. They were like, we might scream. And me and Amelia were like, we will too. It's fine. 
This water slide was so much fun. I kind of wish we would have done it again. I really enjoyed it. It might have been my favorite one because at the end it dumps you out into an aquarium where you get to see the bottom side of this stingray pit. So you get to see all the stingrays swimming by. It was so cool and I was not expecting that at all. What did you think about this one? It was really fun and um, I liked the part where we went down and we saw the stingrays because there was one um, big stingray and two baby stingrays. Yeah, and they were so cute. I love seeing the bottom side of the stingrays because it always looks like they're smiling. Yeah. So after this ride, we decided to go try to ride another water slide. So we rode, um, oh, we walked over to ride Walla Halla Wave. Um, and this is a more thrilling water slide. Once we got over there, the line was kind of long. I think we waited 10 minutes and at that point, Amelia was like, I don't think I want to ride this ride because she was, because we, four people, this is another large inner tube type of ride and four people can sit in it. But because it was just the two of us, we were going to have to sit across from each other and she really wanted to sit next to me. And so we just decided to wait on this ride. We're going to go back in a couple of weeks with the boys. And once there's four of us, I think she'd be more comfortable riding it. Don't you think? Yeah. It has a steeper drop and then it shoots you out into this kind of like wall of water and you kind of wash up the side and then you come back down. And so it looks super fun, but I just did not want her to ride anything that she wasn't comfortable riding. So we walked back down and there was this kind of a uh, playscape in the water that had one of those giant buckets that dumped the water every now and then. And it was called Walkabout Waters. It had some seesaws that were in the water that Amelia wanted to try. So we went and we walked around there for a little bit. We did the seesaws, which were really hard to do for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because you're so much lighter than me, but that was like a serious workout. <laughs> so I lasted probably two minutes on that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Because we had already been walking all day and walking upstairs. I'm like, yeah, no, no thanks. But you went ahead and you went up into the jungle gym. What do you think about that? It was cool. There was a lot of different like little things you could do. There was this one thing that I was confused and it was like um like a cone, a, an upside down cone and it was just like a cone with a wire in it and I didn't know what it was because it had like um it was like water was pouring in it but you couldn't like flip it so mm. I I was confused and there was also a drain in it so like it's just like water that's being wasted. Was water squirting down below on people, do you think? Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe that's what it was for. To yeah, catch the water and there squirt it on was somebody. a thing where you could pull or pull the knob and it squirted water. I couldn't tell if it, you pulled the knob or pushed the knob. But I saw other people doing it, so I'm pretty sure you push it. Very cool. Yeah, it was fun watching her play around. A lot of kids really love this place. This would be a great place for smaller kids to get to go play. The water is very, like, really shallow. They could just kind of walk around. Um, but it looked really fun. So after that, we decided to go do, it was getting later in the day and I was getting tired and we still, we live about two hours from SeaWorld and so I knew we still had about a two hour drive left. So we decided to just try to find another fun um, tube ride that we could do together because Amelia wasn't really interested in doing any of the body slides. That's something more my boys really enjoy doing. So we kind of stumbled across this ride called Huru Run, and you get to choose from a single or a double tube, even though all I saw were double tubes, it says that you can choose a single tube. So we grabbed a double tube, and I had to carry the, that very heavy tube all the way to the top of this slide, which was 
quite the workout, I must say. Like you gotta, you gotta be ready when you go to these water parks. You gotta be ready to carry some heavy tubes up some really tall staircases. So once we got to the top, um, I we didn't really wait long for this ride either, did we? Maybe ten minutes. This one had a little bit of a wait, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. There were some people that had the quick pass and they were kind of going up to the front and they would let them load first. But again, I just don't know if it's worth buying because none of our waits were that long. Um, so what do you think about this ride? This ride was shocking for us. We were not, we had no idea what to expect about this ride. Um, and it had some steep drops, didn't it? Yeah. So I thought this ride would look cool and I'm not sure if it's this ride or another ride, but I'm pretty sure it's this ride where you go in the tube and you go really, really fast down and then you hit this like circle area where you go in a circle and then you drop down. It's not like just like a drop, but it's like a steep hill kind of. And then you go super fast down that and then you get out of the ride and you give your tube to another person. So there's like only like a like maybe nine tubes. So and I'm pretty sure they didn't want to make more because that'd just be wasting money. Um, and they're going to make the um, the one we first talked about. What's that one called? Again? Ripside Race. Yeah. Um, so there's this place where people um, wait in line for their tubes. And we gave our tube to someone else and then we moved on. Yeah, so this ride, you wait in line to get your tube before you go up. So I think that might be why the line isn't very long um, once you get to the top, because they are kind of limiting who can go stand in line based on if you get a tube at the bottom. But this ride, this ride was super fun. Like Amelia said, it has a pretty steep drop. You're going really fast. Like we were not ready for that at all. And then it spits you out into like a whirlpool where you just kind of go around and around and around. And you're kind of like, you can't really see where you're going because the water is so splashy. And then you see this little hole that you're supposed to fit. I like, I didn't even know if our tube was gonna fit down it. It looked so crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But the water shoots you over there and shoots you down this hole and then you come down some other steeper slides and then it spits you out at the bottom. We read this twice, this, we read this twice in a row, I remember. Yeah, because there was two slides. So we rode the pinkish reddish one first and then we rode the purple one. Yeah. They were the same. Yeah. I, I, they were the same. It's just um, the pinkish reddish one went, started going um, the right way, and then the um, purple one started going the right way. Mm -hmm. But it was, this was a really fun ride, and it was kind of, this was the last ride that we did when we were walking out. Amelia did go jump in the wave pool one last time. Um, cause right when we were walking up, the waves were coming. And so she did that. And then we went and got our stuff and we left and we had a really fun day. We spent, so we got to Aquatica probably around 12, 1230. And we left around four, I think. And we did a lot of stuff. Honestly, looking back, um, I'm glad we didn't get a cabana cause we weren't going to be there the whole day. The next time we go, I definitely do want to get a cabana, um, but our strategy of going over on the SeaWorld side and doing some of those rides before Aquatico, I thought was a great strategy. What did you think? Yeah. Because the SeaWorld side of the park was pretty empty. And I don't know if it's because it was going to be so hot that day or SeaWorld just typically isn't really busy in the morning. Um, so... I think that the next time we go, we will get our cabana, go drop all our stuff off on the Aquatica side, go ride some rides on the SeaWorld side, and then head back over and do the water rides. What do you think? Yeah. So overall, we had a great day. It was so much fun. I loved being there with just Amelia. We pretty much just got to do what the girls wanted to do, right? Yeah. We didn't have to listen to anybody else. We just did what we wanted. 
I didn't make her do anything she didn't want to do, and it was a great time overall. I think if you live close to a SeaWorld or if you're visiting an area that has a SeaWorld and an Aquatica, I would highly recommend going because it was a great, great time. It was. Thank you so much for listening today. Make sure to check out our Instagram page at Disney Travel Tales to see lots of pictures and videos from our day trip. Make sure to subscribe to the show so you never miss a new episode. Also, if you're enjoying the show, please leave a positive review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. This is the easiest and best way to support the show. Until next time, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams become a reality.